Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a laser engraver or laser cutter. This is from a company called Longer 3D. Um, they contacted me via email and say, oh, Benson, would you like to try out our laser machine since you did a few YouTube video? I said, yeah, why not? And then they sent this for me for free. The value of the machine is about $500 on their website and um, I have to pay tax on it just to put it up front. Anything I get it for free, either from the manufacturer or for Amazon Vine, I will put it in the description so you guys will know. So I'm just going to let you guys decide how good or how bad this machine is. Now I have used Optum Stack. I have used a laser packer. A Ray 5 10 volt is the first time that I heard about this company. For what I take is that it does have a few things built in like a touch screen. It does have fire protection, vibration or knock sensor. Um, a few bell and whistles that you might not find in your vanilla or standard laser engraver. The one thing which kind of interests me the most and want me to test this machine is that the focusing size of the laser dot. Uh, most of the company on the market, I see that, you know, they have 0 0.008 millimeter, which is a tiny, like a pin uh, head of a laser. And it is so important with a dial laser because you can only go up to uh, maybe 20 volt um, at the laser um, point. Not the whole machine consumption. Don't be fooled by the first generation laser where they say this is a 100 volt machine. But yes, a 100 volt into the machine, but not 100 volt at the laser point. So this one claims that it's 10 volt, but because they can focus it a lot better, the power delivery to burn the wood and to cut the wood should make a big difference. Or at least I hope it will be the case. If you find my information useful, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. My whole channel is dedicated to give you guys information to make uh, your mind up before you spend your money. I'll let you decide how good or how bad this is. So let's get a knife and open it up and I will set it up on my test bench and you guys can see me um, going through the paces with it. Now we didn't discuss what they're going to send me. All I know is the model number and um, they're going to send it to me. It took about a month before it gets here. So uh, I don't know what the logistics is like over there, but it does come from, uh, I think, a EU, Germany. And um, that's why I got text because we are no longer in the EU. It would be nice if they have include like uh, air, ex air assist and stuff like that, but I don't think so because um, it looks like it's just the machine itself. Okay, so out of the box, you got your uh, instruction leaflet. This is not a booklet. This is just a printed A4. And then we have the machine kind of layout like that. All right, so it's not that many parts. So, you know, like most of the laser printer nowadays, it shouldn't be difficult to put together. So this is the main uh, motherboard unit. It has touch screen and a cable attached, a pair of safety glasses, a USB cable, nuts and bolts. Um, usually it comes with uh, the cables and for the gantry, uh, all the tools that you might need. Now I'm in the UK, so they give me a two pin plug, but don't worry, I'm not too worried about this. I got tons of that around anyway. And you've got a power supply. Well, this is 12 volt at five amp, provide a maximum of 60 volts into the machine. Now this is the one of the most important parts in the laser machine. Because most of the time you can just upgrade the gantry or upgrade the laser on its own. You've got a laser protector in the front, company logo here. The wavelength is 450 to 460 Nm nanometer. And the laser optical power is between 10 to 11 volt. So they are quite um, conservative about this. I'm already thinking how I can um, make an air assist for this. So maybe I can put a little needle narrow through here and then push air through it. But we'll test it without the um, air assist and see how it goes before we decide to do any other modification to it. Okay, this is one of the part of the gantry. This is for the laser to actually sit on. It does feel very smooth. And unlike the um, A5, this one has no movement, which is already solid. A few metal plates, I think these are the feet of the machine and a few of the X-axis 
for that as well. So as you can see, it's not many parts. I will count like one, two, three, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight different parts to put together. So what I'll do now is I'm going to do a time lapse so you guys can see me putting this um, together on my test bench. <laughs> Okay, so it took me about half an hour to put it together, but bear that in mind that I have done like three or four printer already. So this is pretty standard and even the size of 400 by 400 is almost like identical to some of the other uh, company in terms of um, the size and how the gantry is set up. I do like the way that, you know, in the video, um, on the website video, they shows that you have to assemble this one together, but the final product that I got, the um, what we call them, the Z uh, gantry is already installed. And I haven't, I haven't done any adjustment to any of the gantry, um, you know, those uh, offset nuts or anything like that. They were pretty uh, accurate when they were installed. The only thing so far I would say is that there's two things I don't like about this machine so far. One is there no end switch. So um, there's hard stop, but there is no end switch. What it means is uh, in some software, when you press the home button, if you have manually moved this around on your, on your, um, on your cut bed, then what happens is when you press the home button, it will grind because the motor doesn't remember uh, where you have moved it to. And it doesn't stop the motor here automatically. And secondly, I think um, the leveling or the focusing distance that you need to adjust with this uh, metal piece. Now, I love a solid piece like this. It's not easy to uh, lose and stuff like that, but to um, get an accurate uh, distance between the, um, the engraving surface and the laser point, you need to have this behind the metal plate. So there's a little recess at the, oh, let, me turn the let me turn this around. So at the back of the, um, of the laser um, attachment, so there is a recess here, and this metal is supposed to go in like that. Now, if you have an um, enclosure or if you have the machine always pointing to yourself like this, it's not that easy to, uh, to adjust. You can do it by touch, but to be honest with you, it will be so much easier if it's just somewhere in the front. I might just actually um, draw a mark here, and then every time I need to adjust, I just put it next to it like that. I think that's the way to do it, but you know, if you if you have another easier way to um, adjust the distance, uh, put it in the comment section and let me know. But yeah, so now it's all connected. I mean, um, because this one doesn't have an end switch, always a good idea to put it to the zero position so it doesn't go any further. And I can switch it on. And that's about it. So this one is ready to be connected to my PC. It does have an SD card slot. So if you use your uh, GBRL um, software to um, do a G code on SD card, you can plug in SD card here. There is also Wi-Fi, which I don't know how to use. I personally don't really use it. All right, now, so I'm ready to burn something or engrave something. I'm just going to do a quick test with a uh, simple letter B. So I connected my PC to the machine and I have light burn running. I have to set the printer up as a generic printer, 400 by 400 bed size. And um, I put a B in the middle of the print bed and I'm going to frame it now. Okay, so that's off the piece of wood a little bit. So I'm going to move it that way a bit. Okay, for that piece of wood, I will say around 300 uh, millimeter per minute. This is the time that you should be wearing your laser goggles. Okay, I should stop it right now because 
I forgot to turn it on to cut. So that was on engraving and it was shooting right through it. So what I will do is move it to the side a little bit so that is you can tell that my video is not scripted because like you know a blunder like this should not happen right okay so I'm going to turn it from fill to line and since it gone right through I think we can do it a lot faster so I'm going to do a 450 on this one so let's try again So this is a uh, 450 speed at 90% of the laser um, and, uh, power and it is a very very clean cut. I mean um, obviously this is a very thin, thin, this is very thin piece of wood so you know that cuts through with no problem. As you can see here this is what I test the X20 Pro with with a power scale so i'm going to do the same i'm going to turn it around this time and i'm going to use this part of the wood all right material test number one we are go sorry about the number it didn't set it up correctly on light burn but um, as you can see it's still usable as a guide Okay, so my first test for this machine without air assist. So um, basically from 10% to 100%. So it start to cut through here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 at 50%. At 50% and 200 millimeter per minute, it start to cut through. But at higher speed, even at a hundred, well, it did cut through. So you know, you just have to poke it through, I guess. Let me try and uh, now this one doesn't want to give. So at four hundred, four hundred and ninety percent, I'm comfortable with, or maybe even three hundred. At 90%, I think I will be comfortable with that. I never like to run my machine at 100% anyway. Okay, so this is the second round. Um, a bit better with the cutting. I can see it actually drop off the piece of uh, free meal pipe. And um, but then... It was a bit too light on the engraving, which is my personal, um, which is my error of judgment with uh, the power that is needed. So it's on 50%. And I think I can do it with a bit darker shade, but cutting it out, no problem. I think um, this cut really well. So three mil pie is kind of like no problem. Uh, this one, obviously um, it's not even plywood. This one is just a, a birch, I think. A very thin piece but let's move on to the wood that I use the most so this is a uh, reclaimed uh, wood from a pallet so this one here there is no glue in between the layer and this is about 14 mil thick so it will be a uh, good idea to judge how good the power level is with this machine at uh, half the power of the X20 Pro so uh, it might not cut through so I do not know so this is a little test that we can do today and I just quickly cut this one down because this thing is a bit too long actually I don't need to I'm moving on this way move on to this side all right so I have set it to um, cut through it's going to be loads of passes and loads of smoke okay I'm happy with that so let's start Now with 14 mil, there's no way it's going to cut through at one pass. Uh, the X20 Pro take about five or six passes. But let's see what this one can do. And don't forget, this one have no air assist. 
I don't even know if we will work. So this is the second pass. Oh, I can see it pointing through. So from the silver tray, you can actually tell when they're going to cut through because you can see some laser coming through. Yep, now it's cutting through. So the five pass and I am at power 90% and speed is 300 millimeters per minute. Now I got, I got laser goggle on, so I am looking at it directly. And um, the last pass here is still not cutting through at the top corner there, but over this side is already cut through. So this is quite impressive without, um, without the, what you call them, without air assist, it can manage to cut through. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with this uh, laser. I think it must have something to do with the laser focusing. That smaller dot size really make a difference in terms of how penetrative the laser is. All right, guys, so there we go. Pilot wood. It doesn't want to come off. There we go, it just pops out. Look at that cut. Engraving on the top, obviously I can do a bit more, but in terms of uh, cutting, I think this is brilliant. So this is measuring 12.9 mil. I guess this is oak. So there is no glue or additive in the wood. Engraving on top and then cut out. So this is, I think, seven, eight passes at 300. There you go, guys. 13 mil wood, oak and it managed to cut through clean without air assist. The laser focusing is spot on, I think. That's really good. I like it. I really like this machine. All right, so this is a aluminum sheet, tiny piece of aluminum. And this is power 300 millimeter per minute at 90%. So it's almost like cutting piece of wood. And um, I don't like using thin aluminum because it's so thin that it kind of, uh, the heat kind of warps it, but it does engrave. So you can actually feel the, um, the dent in it. So basically the top part of the aluminium is kind of burnt away, so that's why it's black. Now if I do rub it, the suits will come off a bit, so it become lighter. So usually what I do is just spray some lacquer on it to seal it and that's it. So this will be the end of my video and I have done um, a 14 mil or 13 mil of uh, oak. And you can see it right here from a pallet wood this thick and um, also cut through a free meal pie wood. So these ones have some glue in the middle and also aluminium um, card. So thank you very much for watching. I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadgets. Bye bye.